Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and LandonAirPhotos.com. Before you take your first flight with the Autel Evo, take this guided tour of the Autel Explorer app. Before we get started, this episode is part of an entire series of videos designed to make you a better, safer drone pilot. If you want to learn about drone flying, take this opportunity to subscribe to the channel. Just click the little Cartoon Jeff on screen right now to subscribe, and hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post again. Today we're going to take a tour of the Autel Explorer app version 1.0.0.5. This is the Android app, but functionally speaking, I think you'll find it pretty much the same as the iOS version of the app. Once you've installed the app and gone through the initial setup of your drone, the Autel Explorer app should open automatically when you connect it to your controller and boot up the controller in the drone. If you connect and the app doesn't open, you can open it from your smart device as you would any other app. The app opens to this main screen. To the bottom left is a link to the current weather conditions at your location. If you aren't connected to the internet with your smart device, this will not display weather data. To the bottom right, you see a display of the current status for your controller and drone batteries. In the lower center of the screen is a Go Fly button. You see the Go Fly button has turned blue. This means the transmitter and drone have connected and you can tap this button to open the camera screen of the app where you will do all your flying. Now, let's walk around the screen so you understand what all the buttons and numbers mean. After we finish that, I'll go into the settings and help you configure the drone to perform the way you want it to. First, let's review the screen. In the upper left corner is the Autel logo. Tap that and you return to the main screen. Hit the Go Fly button to come back to the camera view. Next to the logo is a status indicator. The message on this indicator will vary depending on if you're connected, disconnected, have GPS, etc. It will also tell you when you have a low battery. Keep an eye on this area during your flight to monitor your system. If you tap on the status indicator, a new window appears to display your intelligent flight modes. Currently, these include dynamic track, viewpoint, orbit, waypoints, and VR. You can return to the camera view by pressing the camera button or the X in the upper right corner. Next to the status indicator is the status of your drone's battery. As you're flying, this will show a number that reflects the estimated amount of time you have left to fly based on the battery's charge. Note that I said estimated. Temperature, wind conditions, and other factors could cause your battery to discharge more quickly than this meter might indicate. Always leave a safety margin in your flight time and keep your drone close as you approach low battery warnings. Next to that we have indicators showing the drone's altitude and horizontal distance from the home point, which by default is the point where the drone launched. You can change that in the settings and I'll touch on that later. Next to the horizontal distance indicator is the drone speed indicator. In the right corner is a gear shaped icon. This opens a window where you can view and change a variety of settings. I'll cover that after we finish our tour on the screen. There is more to do along the top of the screen. If you tap on this top menu anywhere on the battery or distance indicators, a second menu bar will appear. The first icon displays the status of your visual navigation. Next we see the number of satellites our system is connected to. To the right of that we see a meter showing the strength of our remote control signal. If you get a message that the remote control signal is poor, you should bring the aircraft closer or take it higher to get it away from interference and hopefully improve signal quality. If you lose your remote control signal, the drone should trigger an automatic return to home and fly back to its home point. The next icon, Image Transmission Signal, displays the strength of the video feed that allows you to see the first person view on your screen. A poor image transmission signal can cause your view to become glitchy or to disappear entirely. 
A loss of image transmission signal doesn't mean a loss of control, so don't panic if your view suddenly freezes up or cuts off. Next we see an indicator showing the actual charge on your transmitter battery, and next to that, the charge level on the cell with the lowest voltage charge in your drone. Tap the top menu bar on the battery or distance indicators to make the second bar disappear. Beneath the menu bar in the upper left corner is a map view of your current location, assuming you have internet connection for your smart device. You can swap the map and camera views by tapping the map. Now the camera view is in the small box and the map fills the screen. There are three little icons to the right side of the map. The top one unlocks the map orientation. By default, the top of the map is north. Tap this top button and the map orients to your smart device's position. Moving the device causes the map to rotate. Tap again and it locks the top to the north. Tap the middle icon to center the map to yourself, actually to the current position of your transmitter, to the home point, or where the aircraft is currently located. The bottom icon allows you to choose a satellite view, map view, or a hybrid. Don't mess with calibrate coordinates for China switch unless you're in China. Beneath that you can choose to have your drone's flight route show on the map or not, and you can clear it from the screen. Close this window by tapping anywhere on the screen. You can zoom in and out on your map as you would with any other app by pinching and opening with your fingers. Let's go back to the camera view. Tap the small camera view window and it swaps back to fill the screen. Let's look at the right side of the screen. You'll see three icons and a folder shaped icon at the bottom. The top icon is an album that allows you to open and view your recorded pictures and videos. I don't have a media card in the drone right now so this icon shows as inactive. Let's skip the middle button for a second. The third button down is a toggle between shooting still photos and video. By default it is set to record video. Press the toggle button and now it's set to shoot photos. Hit it again and you're back to video. You can tell which mode you're in by looking at this large middle button. In video mode it's red. In still photo mode it's white. Also, the settings along the bottom of the screen will change as you switch between photo and video. Now let's talk about the middle icon. This is your shutter button where you can start and stop shooting video or take a still image. If your app is set to record video, the button will appear as a red circle, and you can press this to start and stop the recording. By the way, you can shoot photos and videos by hitting the buttons on your transmitter as well. You don't have to use the button on the screen. Finally, we have this button that looks like a folder with a wrench on it. This is called the camera settings window. It really is more of a menu to adjust screen display settings rather than the camera. I'm going to talk about this when I go through all the settings, so for now, click outside the window to close it and return to the camera view. Along the bottom is a wide variety of camera settings called the camera parameter bar. As I said before, the settings will change as you toggle between photo and video. Watch. They will also change as you choose between manual and auto settings. More on that later. Over in the left corner we have an icon to show the angle your camera is currently tilted. Most often you'll tilt the camera with a knob on your controller. But you can also tilt your camera by pressing on the screen for a second then sliding up and down like this. Or, you can press this gimbal icon and choose a specific angle to tilt the camera. Tap on screen to get rid of this menu. 
Personally, I don't see the value of tilting the camera by sliding around on the screen. I'd rather use a finger to adjust the dial and keep my thumbs on the sticks. But the option to press this icon and choose a specific angle does have value if your shooting situation requires that level of specificity. One more icon on our tour. In the middle of the left edge is an arrow. Press this to open a tray from the left side that shows the device status and activity log. Tap the tray and you open your settings window, which is what happens when you press the cog icon in the upper right corner of the screen. I have a few additional screen features to show you. When shooting video, a counter shows how long your video has been recording. Beneath that is an estimate of how much time you have left to record based on available space on the media card and your current recording settings. When you approach an obstacle, the screen radar will display to show you where and how far the obstacle is from the drone. The obstacle avoidance system will detect obstacles in front of and behind the drone. That's it for your tour of the Autel app screen. In the next episode, we'll dive into the settings to help make your drone work best for you. Thank you for watching this video. I set up a Facebook group to make it easier for us to talk and arrange opportunities to fly together. Follow the link in the description below to sign up for the group. On screen you'll find links to more videos on how to fly drones, so please check them out. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Thanks for watching.